Hey, this is Evan Woodbury, and this is Brendan Quinn with uh, GoVols Extra. We're doing double coverage today. We solicited your questions on Twitter about Tennessee's upcoming game against Western Kentucky. We're going to answer a few of them today. And, of course, you can always follow our coverage on GoVols Extra and on Twitter. So what's our first question from readers? It's from C. Taylor. Do you expect a hard run for Tennessee? What are they going to have to do in order to beat WKU? Well, Brendan, I, I think it – will be a tough game and certainly their toughest of the non-Oregon, non-conference games. Um, but perhaps it's been overstated a bit. I mean, this is still an SEC team versus a Sun Belt team. Unless something goes massively wrong, this is a game that Tennessee should win. Well, and using a, a hard run on the against Western Kentucky, which I believe the question said, would, I, I would expect them to primarily keep it on the ground as, as much as possible. Kentucky had uh, success running the ball against Western Kentucky and uh, the Vols with that offensive line should be able to control the, the the ball and the tempo and the game from up front. Next question from TrueVol98. Do we win against WK and if so, do we cover the 15 point spread? I've actually seen it drop down to or beat about 13 or 14. I'm not sure it ever reached 15. But well, I think we, either way we, we, did, we are different on this. Yeah, I think so. I, th I had Tennessee winning by about 17, obviously for entertainment purposes only. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I think this is a game that, that, that they should win by more than two touchdowns. Well, right after the Austin P game, driving back to the office with, with Mike Strange from the, the new Sentinel here, my, the first number that popped in my head was 8.5 to 9. As, as if I were putting a, a number on the game, and I would probably stay with that at this point, that I feel like the Vols are just a touchdown and a half better than Western Kentucky at this point. D. Jeremy D. asks, should Tennessee fans have more confidence in this Butch Jones team to win Saturday? Seems like the last few years have jaded us. Well, I mean, I, I do. I think I would go back to saying that, that an SEC team should always beat a Sun Belt team except in the rarest of circumstances. And I think you saw last week Kentucky was one of those rare circumstances, a rivalry game played at a neutral site. And uh, frankly, Kentucky is the worst team in the SEC and probably by a long shot. So, I mean, I think that's uh, if Tennessee loses, it would be a very bad loss and, and no one should overlook that. That said, compared to uh, the South Alabama game or compared to the Austin P game, I think this game will be a lot tougher. Well, to address the point of having more confidence with, with this game as opposed to, I guess, in years past and a jaded fan base. If anything, you could say that Derek Dooley and the Tyler Bray era, this was this is when they shined. These, these were the games when Bray would put up Heisman numbers and Dooley pretty much took care of business in, in most of these, uh, you know, against lower tier teams. I don't think that was ever really a problem, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if we know much. I don't know if we know enough at this point with Butch Jones' career in terms of preparedness going into games and game day management I still think that, that that's something that you want to see play out over time a little bit more right I, I think you know this the first game was was almost a scrimmage as far as right. the amount of reserves they played and the basic sets they did on both sides of the ball so I think it's it's tough to to draw a real firm conclusion about what kind of Tennessee team we're going to see Fender Six wants to know how often will UT go with more Randolph and McNeil at safety due to Petrina potentially airing it out with WKU well, we looked at the stats from the first game and saw uh, an incredible amount of nickel back sets with three cornerbacks in there, five defensive backs. Um, it was probably 85% of the snaps they took against Austin P on defense were out of nickel sets. So given that, uh, that Western Kentucky comes from a similar perspective, probably run a little bit more, have a little bit more of a balanced offense than Austin P, but I'd still expect to see a ton of nickel looks. Uh, that means a lot of Jerron Tony, a lot of Devon Swafford. Uh, I'm not sure how much they'll actually put. They'd put three safeties in there, but certainly you'll see a lot of uh, three cornerback looks and, and five defensive back looks. And just in terms of how much Western Kentucky is going to pass the ball, I'm still kind of unsure of, you know, everyone's so familiar with the, the you know, sling it all day, every day style that Petrino has had in his previous stops. But the quarterback that he currently has, Doty, is making only his third career start. And... I feel like Bobby Petrino is trying to make things as manageable and as easy uh, for him as possible. So I'm, I'm not expecting to see uh, Western Kentucky go out and try to air out the ball 45, 50 times or anything like that in, in this Saturday's game. They ran the ball really well against Kentucky, True. too. Yeah. Go Ball 78 asks, can we get a big rush to help our corners? Well, I think that's uh, something that's imperative and something that Butch Jones has mentioned from the get-go is is to help the the best way for the defense to help those young corners 
is to get a get a solid rush on the quarterback. And more to the point, doing it with just four uh, linemen, not having to add an extra guy to blitz in order to get pressure. And we didn't really get a chance to see that again in the Austin P game, in part because they never they went to reserves pretty quickly, but also because I mean Austin P just got rid of the ball in a hurry. They never really looked downfield yeah. long enough to allow the pass rush to be a factor. And so I, that, that'll be something to watch. And I don't think Tennessee showed very much in terms of different blitz packages and, and wrinkles that you'll see kind of develop uh, in the defense over time. I think that was just very much just a, a base set and figure that just on strength and talent alone that Austin P wouldn't be able to do much. So I'd be interested to see how much, if at all, they blitz more or, or you know, different sets that they show or different uh, wrinkles to uh, to the pass attack or the the pass rush because I feel like at this point with the inexperienced secondary, it's going to be ultimately imperative for them to at least get in the backfield and disrupt the quarterback, even if you're not getting to him. Last question from Don Hatcher. Do you think one quarterback will play the entire game? I think so. I, I Well, I, I if the game stays relatively right. close, I think so. If it turns into a blowout situation, I think it'll be similar to last week where you saw uh, Nathan Peterman coming in relief. But uh, otherwise, I think this is still very much Justin Worley's job without a, with honestly, a, probably a, a larger gap than maybe I even thought between Worley yeah. and Peterman. I, I think it's it's his job for the foreseeable future. And I think it would be good in the long run that if, if maybe this could be a game that needs to be managed for a full four quarters just to see Justin Worley go through it and actually run this team and maybe make some pressure throws in the second half and kind of just see how he embraces uh, situations like that moving forward because of the schedule that's coming up you kind of want to see him in some pressure spots. I think that's all our questions from Twitter we'll be doing this every week and uh, you can always interact with us I'm a Tennessee beat and I think you're at Quinn KNS Quinn KNS on Twitter and uh, we'll be back Saturday with uh, plenty of coverage from this week's game.